Poker Elite are gathering for an all-new PartyPoker.com World Open 4. 72 players have flown from around the globe to test their skills in this ultimate face-off. I don't ever think about the money, I just I play because I want to win. I think everybody knows the fish is the best. Win a bit, lose a bit, you know, that's all, it's all fun. It's not all about the money, it's about winning the title. I think it would mean everything to win this tournament. The winners took their seats in the semi-finals, the runners-up get a second chance in a turbo round. Over $500,000 is the prize pool, and the champion will take a cool quarter-million first prize. Also, nobody knows how the pros' minds tick like Neil Badby Channing. He'll be given his insights on the moves that grew. So hold tight for some extreme poker. Look at the ears, it's tweaking. One, two, one, two. Jesse May, Jesse May, one, two. Ow. That's winning. Yeah. Tonight, another heat kicks off with a supreme lineup. Last time, a table of celebrities battled it out for a spot in heat one. It was Min Patel who won through, and he joins the table tonight. Everyone on that table knew how to play the game, so to come through that, a pretty tough celebrity. Um, yeah, more than tough. Andy, 17 and a half, Ward is one half British deadpan, and the other half raving mania. He lets his game do the talking, and those raises sure fly fast. When things are going well, people look around and, and say, how did he get all the chips? <laughs> because hopefully he can just do it without anybody noticing, but it's all in the hands of the gods today, so we'll just um, play our best and see what happens. This internet sports trader is known as the Hangman. He's fresh off the back of winning a runner-up spot in the European Open 4 and pocketing $100,000. I suppose the pros, they win sort of big money like I did on a regular basis. Uh, for me to win it, it wasn't just about the money, it was, it was the thrill of the ride, it really was. It's wonderful. Dave Gregory has been playing poker for over 25 years. His biggest win was back in 2006 when he took third place at the EPT Barcelona, where he won over $200,000. The buzz of a live tournament is, is unbeatable, you know, the, the adrenaline goes, and especially if you can get to the final table and whatever, you know, it's, it's great. Luke is well known on the poker circuit. He has a quiet and modest style. He made the final of the UK Open in 2007. Can he do the same in the World Open 4? The last time I played in a TV tournament, I played really OK, but I played a very ABC game um, before I played really rashly and gone out after about five seconds. So um, it could be quite humiliating. So I'm going to try and play quite tight, I think, today. The Bach from Cyprus says he fears no one on the poker table. His greatest poker achievement is getting a spot on the World Open 4. The pressure is on for this 23-year-old. So this is my first time on TV. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, it's a free roll for me. I qualified for £40, so I'm going to give it my best shot and see what I can do. Shaved heads and stern faces. At the poker table, who could ask for anything more? Commentating with me tonight is poker journalist Matt Broughton, and he joins me now. Matt. Nice lineup we've got. What do you like about it? Well, it's the diversity. We've got lots of different experience, lots of different styles, but everyone's on form right now. Of course, we saw Min Patel last time. Did you like his game? I thought he had great composure. He sat down with the plan. The cards weren't great for him, but when it counted, he struck. The form book says Craig Burgess. He was a runner-up his last time out in the European Open. And, you know, that winning form really helps, but I like this Andy Ward. He's an underdog. First time out. You think he's got a chance first time on TV? Well, I think confidence is, is the key thing, and it is on the back of a good run. If he sits down with the right mental attitude, anything can happen. Yeah, he was runner-up at a World Series bracelet event. He's an anorak. He's probably watched thousands of these, so let's see. There'll always be some surprises in the deck. Perhaps even the Jack of Diamonds can jump out and squirt cider in your ear. Primary spectrum in play. Yellow chips worth a thousand. Blues are two. Reds five k. Each player sitting on a hundred thousand in chips with six hundred thousand on the table. Min Patel on the button. Lines one and two thousand. I mean, if you talk about experience in this particular <coughs> format, Matt, Dave Gregory there under the gun, he's probably played more of these heats than everyone else put together. Yeah, and you know, feeling comfortable and confidence, they're so important in these tournaments. Um, and you can exert extra pressure on players that aren't familiar with the way these things run. But I don't think it'll take these guys too long to settle into it. They will have all have played different tournaments at different structures, and they'll, they'll, soon, they'll soon get into the flow of this. That said, Gregory's been a little salty the last year. And I wonder how he's feeling. He does have that kind of style where he gets out of the traps and plays pots in his first level, and it's not a great flop for him. 
No, well, you've got to be involved in the action. Uh, okay. But if you don't connect, it's a pretty easy decision to get out of the way. And Gregory checking and folding. I think that was right. Luke was probably going to have a yeah, little yeah. bit of resistance there with the sixes. Yeah, and at this stage, they, they've, they've not yeah. really had much experience with each other, so there's a lot of testing each other at this point just to find out who's going to yield, who's going to fight back, who's going to bully me. So lots of very testing play at this point. It's kind of almost more important than the cars themselves. It's just to try and build up a, a profile on the guys you're sitting against. Might not be too much banter at the table. I mean, Andy Ward, you're not expecting him to talk much. His, his blog is called Get It Quietly. <laughs> Yeah, that gives you a bit of a hint of the uh, the style he prefers. But I think, you know, you'll see players loosen up. It is at this stage. There's no one with a major chip advantage. There's no one who's yeah. swaggering around with the lead. There's no one who's Pass. worried down the bottom of the table. So it's Pass. it's just time to pay attention and try and try and build as big a profile on every single individual as you can. Pass. That's a good fold there from Min. It's a second free flop raise on the trot for Ward. He's got the Queens and Interesting to see if Gregory wants to make a move on this hand, even if he misses the flop. Feel Gregory is going to look at this and think he's in good shape. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but then again, it really depends how big uh, Ward makes the pot. If you play as many hands as Dave Gregory does, you have to be able to get your way out of prickly situations. Yeah. Well, absolutely. You know, that's probably the more important skill is not just being able to win the ones that you shouldn't, but get out the ones where you're just behind. Because if you are going to be the sort of speculative player that plays lots of hands, well, you're going to make lots of marginal connections. So you've got to be able to decide, yeah. you know, I don't like this anymore. That's a nice check. I like that. You think he's checking the race? I think so. I think he made the call. You know, he made the bet and got called, should I say. And now he thinks, okay. Well, if I show weakness here, maybe you'll push back at me. Doesn't he, happen. Yeah, he was trying to represent Ace King or something there, wasn't he? And uh, Gregory doesn't fall for it, and that's a real danger card as far as Andy Ward's concerned. Absolutely, yeah. He he won't be so happy to see that, but yeah. it could work out well for him. I think we could just see a bet and a call here. I I don't know. If, I don't know if Andy Ward's going to want to fire back at this. Funny sort of bet yeah. by Dave Gregory because it's almost like he was trying to bet for a value there. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think Dave Gregory really knew. I don't think he was putting Andy on a specific hand there. I think I think we read it right in that he thought maybe this is a move being made here, a continuation bet. Actually, been quite a quick first level. We're in the latter stages of it here. Nice. And it's fast and furious. To 6, this this feels like one step too far. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we can quite safely say that Dave, he came here to play, didn't he? He's uh, <coughs> he's pushing the envelope. He is. This is this is a right liberty. <laughs> but you have to make him favorite this hand. Well, he just has so many ways of winning, doesn't he? And it's such a persistent pressure that he, uh, he imposes on everyone that unless he just his timing is off and he walks into an absolute monster at oh. some point, it can just keep working for him. Okay. Well, this is basically a monster for Patel. I, I think Min was check raising there. I'm, I'm guessing he was, and Dave has uh, very rightly well got the free card. It's nuts now for Min, isn't it? Well, this is great. This is great. This could work out really well. It just depends what what Min wants to do with this. I I think you you kind of have to push back with Dave because if you're ahead, then Dave could well put more chips in the pot for you. Yeah, I, I think that's the way to go with a player like Dave. And, uh, with that board, there's so many draws out there that... And also, as well as being worried that Dave could hit his card, well, even if he doesn't, if it's a scare card, he can represent it so well. I think I think Patel has made exactly the right idea here, which is, you know what, if you want to outdraw me or represent it, then you're going to pay for it. But right now, I think I'm ahead, quite rightly, I think I'm ahead. And if you want to fight with me, it's going to cost you chips. It's an odd enough bet. I mean... Can it go through Gregory's mind that Min could be bluffing here? He's going to look stomped. 